वेलकम एवरी वन टू निहाल सरीन अ टैलेंटेड यंगस्टर फ्रॉम इंडिया टेकिंग ऑन अनदर यंग टैलेंट आर प्रज्ञानंदा निहाल हैज अ स्मॉल स्माइल ऑन इज फेस शेख्स हैंड्स प्रग हैज अराइव्ड दे बोथ आर प्लेइंग इन केरला अगेंस्ट ईच अदर टेन गेम्स ऑफ थ्री प्लस टू दिस इज गोइंग टू बी एक्साइटिंग हुज गोइंग टू कम आउट ऑन टॉप लेट्स हैव अ लुक Nihal with white opens the game with d4 knight f6 by pragnananda knight comes out to f3 and pawn to d5 nihal goes for the queen's gambit and what is prag going to do he goes for the declined variation does not take on c4 knight comes out to c3 and prag taking his time in the opening plays the semi slav with pawn to c6 and nihal goes e3 knight to d7 and brings out his bishop black also develops his bishop white castles it out and so does black nihal now puts his pawn up and prag plays his knight into the center and look at that small stair he had he wants to push f5 and go into this stone wall kind of a setup prag's move knight e4 has put nihal in some sort of doubt he takes his time prag plays f5 and the bishop comes up to d3 nihal is freeing up the square on e2 for his knight to move queen comes up whoa what an attack this is going to be with the queen bishop and everything coming in and pawn to g5 pragnananda is going for nihal's king here he pushes his pawn to g5 and now what does nihal sarin do this is the important moment nihal sarin needs to decide if he is going to push his any of the king side pawns because that would only create weakness he can move his knight away and try to challenge prag's knight in the center maybe kicking it away with f3 but look at the time nihal is down to 2 minutes on the clock prag has 2 minutes 53 seconds and nihal taking his time this is actually first game jitters perhaps or not really he goes rook c1 plays it calmly he tells prag i'm ready for your onslaught if you push my knight away i'm just going to move back and prag can actually move his queen away to h6 so that after g4 the queen and bishop can combine to attack the h2 pawn but i think if you move your queen away the white knight will jump into the center with the defense and support of the bishop on b2 and that's the reason why prag plays his pawn to a5 he wants to push his pawn to a4 and create weaknesses on white's queen side and this is actually playing on both sides of the board you are sometimes threatening g4 sometimes threatening a4 it's like you're going for the right hand left hand jab in chess Uh, in boxing sorry a4 played by nihal and he says to prag okay i do weaken my square here now no pawn can defend it but on the other hand your pawn is not going to come forward any more so the pawns are now limited and h5 played by prag he has now three pawns here nihal sarin can actually play a very interesting move h4 sacrificing a pawn because if you take now these pawns are no longer that strong and my knight can jump here but instead he goes rook c2 this is a very very typical nihal move small little move and prag now goes rook to f7 he wants to play his rook to g7 or h7 and i love nihal's next move queen a1 that's because after g4 he wants to play his knight to e5 he has more control over the e5 square very interesting chess here by nihal and prag now has 1 minute 44 seconds on the clock how is he going to play nihal has 30 seconds less and prag nananda now thinking his bishop on c8 is doing absolutely nothing in the game it has to somehow enter but from where prag says for now it doesn't matter i'm just playing with my king side pieces i hope to checkmate nihal's king 
with just these pieces which are playing on the board because if I'm unable to do that then my rook and bishop are just so inactive that I will lose this game so it's a big risk that Prague has taken and Nihal also is risking it because he has less time on the clock he has only 48 minutes and this 48 seconds and this is the first game of the match so there are always some tense moments there rook d1 played and maybe this is not a great idea because it does weaken and soften these squares on the king side and Prague is now thinking because if g4 can be played then the knight jumps to h4 if you push that pawn so therefore first pawn comes up ahead and next move now the other pawn would come and then it would blast open the king side Nihal has to tread carefully here maybe it's the right time to jump into the center exactly that's what he does his knight is in the center he is attacking the rook and Prag takes pawn takes and h3 Wow, this is a nice move because with this, the light squares are being softened up. And imagine the queen coming in here and delivering a checkmate to the king. That would be something. And look at Nihal's time. He has only 12 seconds left on the clock. He plays his pawn to g3. And now, how does Prag react to this? Prag can actually go queen h5 and queen f3 threatening to mate him. 55 seconds for Prague, just 11 seconds for Nihal. This game could go either way. Right now, the engine suggests that it is slightly better for Nihal Sarin. Actually, slightly better for Pragnananda, but it's very, very even. Very even. And Prague now down to 35 seconds. He's still trying to figure out what to do. He goes Queen H5, the best move. Knight comes to D4. And the point is the bishop can drop back and hit the queen for the time being the knight defends this square. Very good defense by Nihal and now Prag can actually take this pawn. He can take the central pawn but instead he goes f4. This is not a good move. This is actually weakening his knight a bit. Nihal takes, pawn takes and f3. Well, Prag should sacrifice his knight. This would be a very powerful position for him. Will he do that? With 15 seconds on the clock, is Prague ready to sacrifice? No, he goes back. But this is not a good idea. Because now Nihal can actually push his pawn. He does it. But Prague has a sacrifice in mind. He can take. Knight takes and queen takes fg4. He takes it. But in fact, king h1 is very powerful. Nihal finds it. What a nice move. Queen takes and rook f2. Forcing the knight to move so that rook g1 would win the queen. Amazing chest. Knight h4 played. Rook g1 comes on the board. Knight to g2 and Nihal sacks an exchange. Pragnananda shaking his head. He's losing the queen here. And with that, he's also losing the game. Completely lost position. Nihal Sarin goes back with his bishop. But guys, Pragnananda has blundered. Nihal Sarin now, if you count the material, has a queen and a piece for two rooks. Which means he's essentially a piece up. And this is, rest is very easy. He brings his queen in. And for a player of Nihal's caliber... This is just going through the motions. Bishop c6. He's bound to win this. He takes another pawn. Rook d8 played. Takes another pawn. Rook f5 and he moves the queen. Guys, this is all over. Prak could very well resign this game. Pawn takes. King now blockades. Fantastic job here. Pragnananda has only two seconds. He plays his king up. Nihal bringing his king up. But suddenly the pawn starts to roll. Oh my god, are we going to see some kind of a turnaround? Rook moves into t2. The bishop is defended by the queen, so there's no problem. Nihal starts to push his kingside pawn, which is the best decision. Check, king moves up. And now he brings his queen back, which is fine. Again, you can see Prague spots his chance with just one second pushes the pawn. Whoa! Nihal goes bishop e3, but suddenly rook e2 pins the bishop. Queen g4 blunder, rook f4. The bishop is pinned. And now he loses the queen and resigns the game. Pragnananda has won with 1-0 lead in the match. What a turnaround at the end. Nihal was completely winning. And this is just unbelievable.